First up, oregano. The world sprinkles $3 billion a year of herbs and spices onto their grub. But I've read headlines like these that are getting supermarkets, customers and me worried. So what's going on with this humble herb? And just how pure is my oregano? Or is it oregano? To get the inside scoop, I'm heading to Turkey, where they produce a whopping 80% of the world's oregano supply. We've just landed in Turkey and it is hot. This is our man. Hi. So you know where the farms are? Yes. Shall we go to oregano fields? Let's go. OK. Uh Guiding us southwest to Denizli is oregano aficionado Dr. Hesseini Agdemir, who's overseen oregano production in the region for the past four decades. So if anyone knows how to pronounce the word, it's our man here. Yes, oregano. Everywhere. Right, oregano. Yes. Oregano, oregano, oregano. Now, how many times do you say oregano? Maybe 5,000 times. <laughs> because oregano is my life. I've had this for about an hour now. How are we getting on, crew? Do we know a lot about oregano now? We love oregano. At an altitude of 1,200 metres above sea level, Hussein's abundant oregano fields cover a massive 13,000 hectares. The evidence of the herb is everywhere. Wow, what a lovely smell. Yes, yes. So this is all the oregano, and they're obviously cutting it now. Yes, it's oregano just harvested time. So here we go. Lovely bunches. Are these good conditions to grow this plant in? Yes, good condition for oregano production. That's the new water. And the oregano price is more, I mean, 10 times more price than the uh, barley and wheat. That's amazing. And once the crop is cut, what happens to it next? The fresh oregano stay there in the field, in the uh, sun drying, and after that, threshing. Come with me, we will show you. OK, let's okay. go. OK, let's go. Now, before we get on with the threshing, apparently, I've got some proper Turkish coffee. So, time for a coffee break. Oh, wonderful. Yes, OK. That is so... <clears throat> that is strong. It is strong, yes. I don't think I'm going to sleep for a fortnight now. Mm -hmm. Coffee consumed, the locals have yet another treat in store for me. This lady here says she can read my future in the grains that remain. You see a baby? Oh, I've already got four. I don't want any more babies. <laughs> right, that's a trip down the doctors then. <laughs> Seems like the oregano might not be the only thing that's getting the chop. Having dried in the fields for a few days, the farmers now separate the oregano leaves from the stalks. Look at that. So how much dry oregano does Turkey produce there? 9,000 tonne pure dry oregano leaf, but export 15,000 tonne uh, oregano. I don't understand. The maths just doesn't work. The farmer is harvesting 6,000 tonnes less oregano than the industry is selling. How can that be? This seasoning's got me stumped. I know the stuff leaving the farm is 100% pure, so to find out why there's this discrepancy, I'm heading 115 miles west. Hi there, I'm Jim. Hi, Jim, I'm Kazim. Nice How are to you? Meet you? Welcome. Kazim Gorel is the head honcho at the Oregano Adulteration Lab, and I'm intrigued. What's going on with oregano? So tell me, how can Turkey export more oregano than it produces? Well, Jimmy, it's called economically motivated adulteration, which basically is food fraud. You can make a lot more money out of it if you have the product in there, which is possibly 10% of the cost of real oregano. Wow. Did any governments come up with any legislation? Absolutely. The good news is that on the retail scene, in most of the developed markets, we've got a pretty clean uh, oregano coming on with the major brands. Kazim has set out six samples. But can I tell which is pure oregano and which ones are mixed with something else? Looking at it straight away, it looks the same. I can't see the difference. Can I smell the difference? Well, yeah, that's, that's quite powerful. Yeah, I don't think that has a lot in. Oh, it's so confusing. But do you know what? I think number one's got the most. 
I got the first one right, but I'm astounded at the levels of oregano fraud. Some dried mixes contain as little as 40% pure oregano leaves. That's a lot of profit for an industry that doesn't reach the farmers. Let's make no mistake, this is a crime, isn't it? This is definitely a crime. Can you tell the difference? Jimmy, I've been doing this for almost 30 years, and I even hope I have a hard time doing it. We have to use science. Come with me and I'll show you how it's done. So what is happening here, then? It's literally a system of analysing and seeing what different leaves there are. That round leaf that you see is the pure oregano that we saw. On the left-hand side of the picture, strawberry tree leaf. Right. So you've gone to great lengths to detect any foreign bodies in your oregano, but why go to all this effort? Jimmy, it's a multi-billion dollar industry. And if you can imagine, if someone is putting up to 50% something that's not oregano in the jar, they're making probably a lot more money. So basically, you're the Sherlock Holmes of herbs. <laughs> <laughs> but one thing I need to clear up, oregano or oregano? Tomato, tomato. That's cleared it up. <laughs> While the big supermarkets and brands work hard to regulate the purity of their herbs on their shelves, not all suppliers have the same level of scrutiny. So buyers, beware.